What's up on Power Ass Crew? Today's video, we're working on a 2000 TJ. You know that typical 4.0 liter, 2.5 liter rattle up top with the valve train starts rattling? Yeah, it's got it. But we're gonna change out the rocker arms, followers, and push rods to tighten up the clearances inside there. Because what happens after so long a time, the followers or the pivot balls or pivots, whatever you wanna call them, and the push rod, no, the rocker arms, get a little bit of wear in them, which loosens up the tolerance, which therefore makes them start rattling. So we're going to show you guys how to change them out. It's super easy, no special tools needed. And oh, also, it's going to for the people who just need to change valve cover gaskets, showing you guys the right gasket to use. So if it seems like something you'd be interested in, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up at the end of the video, or hit it now if you want to. Come on, let's get on with this. The first thing we need to do, we need to get this air box out of the way. You've got the clamp here loosen it up that'll pop that up you can pull this back either way like from here or there whichever comes off easier for you more times than not pulling it out the valve cover becomes easier and take it loose here that gives you clearance over top of your valve cover so you can get the rest of your bolts so after you get the air tube out of the way you got your throttle cables here they just simply snap up off the valve cover pretty easy that snaps up over there now, I mentioned earlier about this is easier to come off there. Actually, it's not. Bringing off the air tube is a lot easier because, look, it broke. That's not too uncommon because these engines, the heat cycle, heat cycle means you drive it, it gets hot, it gets cold, it gets hot, it gets cold. The plastic oftentimes gets brittle. So, it's like we're making a run to an auto parts store to pick up another one of those. So, pop the cables loose, get them back out of the way. Pull that back there out of the way. If that one don't break, hopefully. Maybe over here. Okay, pull from there, make it easier. <laughs> so you pull that breather tube up, pull it from the intake, much easier. Now around the valve cover, these are 11 millimeter all the way around. You're going to need a deep well for the ones that's got the studs sticking up here. The back in the back, way back yonder, there is the wiring harness coming out of the firewall. It's got a little clip or whatever sits on the stud back here in the back. So just pull it up, I mean, you just simply slide on, slide off, pull that up, and you'll need 11 millimeter, focus, 11 millimeter deep well for these. Now if you like, which is what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the, the coil packs to give ourselves a little extra room to work around the valve cover, because it's gotta come up and over just a little bit. So pull your coil pack, 13 millimeter, four bolts, pretty easy. Good thing about this generation 4.0 is the ignition system, that's it all across through there. The downside to that is if you got a coil go bad, you gotta replace that whole thing. So, but they very, very rarely go bad. So get just a uh, 13 millimeter out of there, pull that coil pack up, just set it down to the side, and it'll give you more room to work around the valve cover. We've got all the bolts out going around the valve cover. Now, right here that holds AC lines, it's 11 16 That bracket hangs over that lip just enough to be a pain in the tail. So 11 16 take that nut off that stud right there, move the AC lines out of the way, which moves that bracket, and the valve cover should come off. It's not gonna give you enough clearance because you got your rocker arms inside the valve cover to pick it up and move it over. So 11 16 get that big old nut off right there from your AC lines, and you should be able to do it. Yeah, here's a little bracket we removed. Like I said, there's 11 16 on that nut down there. You had a screw right here. That was a, what, eight millimeter, I said? I think it was, where'd, where'd it go? It was a, yep, yeah, oh, gee, eight millimeter. At least it's not 10, or I'll keep that one. Then you just kind of maneuver your lines up a little bit higher. Don't flex them too hard because it joins to the compressor down there, so you don't want to flex them too hard and break your seal. Get up just enough to work that bracket out, which should free the valve cover up. Looky, they're made of gold. That's why Jeeps are so expensive. All right, so right here is your gasket resting down. Right there, they line up on these dowels, which will come really into play once we put it back on. But you bring the bolt top of it. Get on back, y'all. Slide her on out. Well, you can really tell where it's been leaking. Look at the buildup. You know, where it's. Mm hmm, right through here. Now you guys can see it where you get the grunge on the edge of your valve cover. Okay, this valve cover was leaking. It wasn't ridiculously bad, but like right there here, it wasn't because you don't have that buildup on that edge. But she was leaking a little bit. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier in the opening, this thing has that typical 4.0 liter knock. Knock, not, not like a rod knock, but you got that valve rattle up top. And you come through here and twist your push rod, so that push rod right there is loose. Not loose as in sloppy, but it rotates, which means that it's on the bottom of the cam lobe. It's on the round part of the cam lobe. Now, if the cam lobe was up on its peak, you would not be able to turn that, and the rocker would be more closed. So, oftentimes, if it's really bad, you can grab the rocker and move it. Because what happens, I've already got this one here taken off. What you've got are these followers right here. The rocker arms rock on these parts right here. What happens is down inside this pocket right here and on this right here, they wear and start becoming real loose. You lose your valve lash at that point. Now, Chrysler's are a lot like Ford. They don't have a particular valve lash to where you gotta put a filler gauge, a filler gauge in between here, measure it to 30 thousands or whatever the magic number may be. Chrysler, you just simply, with the 4.0s, even the old, uh, yeah, even the old big blocks that had a 440 charger, you simply stick them in, tie them down, call it a day. Because they sit up on top of these pedestals, which you'll see when we reassemble. When you tighten them up, they sit on that pedestal right there. So once you get to a certain point, they bottom out, and then you torque them down. We'll get into the torque specs here in a little bit. But when you pull them out, you look at your, see the wear? It's, not, it's like a flat, dull gold right here, but then it gets shiny right here. That's where you get your wear, and oftentimes for the top end of these uh, Jeeps, that's where you get your rattle at. You see, you got some wear down inside this one right here as well. Not bad. I mean, we're going to check each one of them as we pull them out. We're replacing every one of them. And that's one mistake a lot of people make. If these things start messing around and start seeing that, uh, hey, I got one rocker arm loose. Well, keep something in mind. If you got one rocker arm loose, you got more to follow. So go ahead and change them all out. It's not that expensive. It's not difficult. You only thing you really have to do is pull the valve cover, as uh, we've done already. This right here is a 13 millimeter. Take these out. You don't have to worry about valve timing. You don't have to worry about uh, cam timing, should I say. You just simply take them out, put them back in. It's really simple. So, like I said, I've already pulled these out. And we're going to start putting, and uh, pull the rest of them out, put the new ones in. Now, here we are with the two rock rods laid side by side. This is the new one. This is obviously the old one. You look down inside here, this was nice and smooth down here. This one right here, you can see the wear. And it's actually uneven wear. Because on this side right here, it kind of looks like it's got score marks in it. This side right here is worn smooth, but it's also got a ridge already worn into the side of it right here. This Jeep has 170,000 miles on it. It's been very well maintained. I've known this Jeep since, you know, it was new. So I know the Jeep's been taken care of, so it's not a question whether the oil's been changed or anything. Okay, heck, I've changed the oil on it a couple times. So I know the Jeep has been very well maintained, but this is just the nature of the beach for a lot of these 4.0s and the 2.5s. You get that rocker on wear, and that's where you get your rattle at on the top end. So there you go. Mystery demystified. That's what makes that top end rattle is what you see right there. That and the followers wear out. Now let's look at where the uh, push rod rides in at. The one thing you want to check for your push rods first. If you look right down the tube and get some light area, it's like off the concrete right here. Well, where's that? Where's that? Oh, there it is. You can see through it. No gummy, no stuff like that, which means you got good oiling. So it's just one of those precautionary things. You want to check, make sure you've got, your push rods are clean. That way you know you got, you've had a good oiling. But what you'll also find is that right here, the pivot where the push rod rides at. You can also check to see if you got excessive wear there. Now keep in mind, those, when they punch these things out, that's not a perfect pocket every time, by no means. Because I'm sure the camera's not going to pick up the detail on this, but on the outer edge, you can see the shape of the push rod tip. But then down where the oiling hole is, it caves in just a little bit more. That's going to give the oil room to get inside there and inject down inside the rocker arm. And we'll come, the oil line, the oil pressure comes up the push rod then through the oiling hole of the rock arm then it falls down as it comes up through the rock arm here it falls down on top of the uh, pivots down here and keeps that oiled up so it's like a circulation it comes up, comes up through here comes through the push rod through that hole right there falls down inside right here creates your oil film here then runs back down in behind this and back into the oil pan and makes a big vicious circle here okay so what you also want to check we got new push rods going in 
rare, rare, rare that you'll get one that's not clean because obviously they're new. But it has happened. Right there's the light through that one. So I can blow through it. I can see through it. Lay them up beside your old ones. Touch here. There. Same length. And, you know, roll them. Make sure they're not bent, which I'm on a car hood right now, which is not a very good indication. What you want is a good flat piece of steel or glass is actually preferred. Glass is always flat. You know, like a uh, glass of a picture frame or something like that. Therefore, you know you got perfectly straight push rods. And you can also see here, this is where it rides on top of the valve. And I run my finger across it. I've got no excessive wear. Now, if you have excessive wear here and you run across it, you'll feel a dip or like a catch on your finger. So I've got no excessive wear there. This actually is okay because you don't have a perfect pocket. Even though you just see a ring with a pocket down there, like I mentioned a moment ago, that creates that pocket that allows the oil flow to come up through the push rod, through the rock arm, and down into the pivot system here. But the pivot here, I don't like that at all because you got clean over here and over here looks like it's galled. And like I mentioned a moment ago, don't jump on the bandwagon that's got oil changes. I know this Jeep, I've known it since it was new. I know it's very well maintained. But this is just one of those nature of the beast for the 4.0s. Now as you can see here, we're just haphazardly pulling them off in shape, form, or fashion. That's because we're replacing push rods and rocker arms. Now listen very closely. If you were going to re reuse your rocker arms, reuse your push rods, it is 100% utmost important that this rocker arm, this push rod, goes right back in the same place. This rocker arm, this push rod, goes back in the same place. If you're reusing your old ones, we're replacing rocker arms and push rods and the followers and stuff like that. So we don't have to worry about that. But again, I stress, if you guys, for whatever reason, are pulling your rocker arms off for whatever the purpose may be, and you're reusing your rocker arms and your push rods, they 100% must go back in the same place they came from. Intake, exhaust, so on, so on, when I'm one cylinder, number two cylinder. If you figure out some way you gotta mark them, lay them on some cardboard, mark on the cardboard, number one cylinder intake, number uh, one cylinder exhaust, whatever. But I know I sound like I'm beating a, a dead horse here. They will have to go back in place. And there's a specific reason why. The rocker arm, when it wears to the valve tip, the push rods comes up through here, comes up through that hole right there. They set up inside the socket of your rocker arm here. They wear a particular way. Because one way you can tell if you got a dead cam lobe, if you start up a, start up your vehicle, whether it be it doesn't matter if it's a Jeep, if it's Chrysler, Ford, whatever, Chevrolet, your push rods turn. When the rock arm's doing this number right here and it's running, your push rods turn. So the way to tell if you got a dead cam lobe, take you a paint pen and draw you a mark up and down your push rod. Let it dry, start your engine up. That push rod turns, like this right here, as it runs but push rods are not turning you got dead cam lobe so what could happen if you take and mix up your push rods and they're and down inside there's your lifters if your push rods not set in the exact same pocket in your lifter you no know, it's where they created naturally that push rod will not turn like it's supposed to it'll wear prematurely to your rocker arms and stuff like that so again i know it's like i'm beating a dead horse here if you were using your parts make sure they go back to the same place all right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, snatch the rest of these off. Like I said, it's a 13 millimeter. We're gonna pull them off, put the new ones in. Okay, we have casually stuck three push rods in there. Can you, can you guys pick out which ones are the right ones, which ones are wrong? Meaning, which ones are sitting on the lifters, which ones are not? Look at the height of them. Look at the angle they're sitting at. The downside to any, most of the inline six cylinders, the Chevrolets have a little side cover on them. The 256 cylinders, you pull the little side cover off, you can see the lifters on those. These you can't because they're buried down inside here. So this one's not right. This one's not right because they're sitting a lot lower than this one because this one's sitting in the lifter. Basically what you got to do is pick it up and you feel I'm pushing on the side of this. It's not right. Boom. It's sitting right into the lifter right there and oftentimes you can turn you can feel how smooth it is if it's sitting inside the lifter pocket correctly anywhere else it's going to feel like it's you no know, scratching or dragging 
Now there's those wise tails people come up there. You can push down on it right there and you can feel the lifter spring up. Not all the time, no. Because hydraulic pressure built up inside the lifters sometimes makes that lifter, I'm not going to say as far as solid, but you don't have enough strength in your hand really to push down because the valve springs will cause it to spring up. So this right here, you get over here, get you some angles. Pick it up, feel for it, feel for it. There it is. Now I've been doing this a day or two, so I kind of know what to feel for. Now you can get you a flashlight, shine it down inside that hole where that lifter, the push rod's going and see the top of the lifters. But once you get one of them, you kind of get that feel for, okay, I see how that feels. I, you know, you turn it, it feels smooth because I'm sitting in the lifter bore. But yeah, you can get your flashlight, look down inside there, you can see it a lot better. When you go to put your gasket on your valve cover, you've got these right here going on. This right here is actually one of the new seals. You've got this metal tab right here, or metal cap, or whatever you want to call it. Then you've got this, which is these right here. It sits on the back side, so what you want to do is take your flat screwdriver, get on that lip right there, and you push it on through. Then the rubber right here just kind of snaps out. So when you go put them back in, the new ones, as you see here, snap this in first, because you can see the little tangs right here, these kind of nice and easily push over. You'll come in from the back side. Those will snap in like that. And you'll take this, feed that up through there. And what those little caps do is prevent you from over tightening your gasket and squeezing it out and busting the gasket. What I suggest you do is take your ratchet, go across all your rock arms and just snug them down. They're not like a Chevrolet. Chevrolet, you know, you got a set of valve blasts. You got a certain gap between your valve tip and your rock arm. The 4.0 liter Jeeps don't have to worry about 2.5 is the same way. Only thing you do, you go through there, you tighten them down, snug them down. Then we're going to take our, our torque wrench, torque wrench for 19 foot pounds, come across all of them, and torque them down to the proper torque specs. You don't have to go any kind of certain sequence or anything like, like that, like you would doing a head bolt or head bolts or something like that. You just simply start at the front, work your way back, 19 foot pounds on each single one of them. Got her set, make them pop. Now notice how he's doing them. Whenever you pull, stay up to you, keep your fingers relaxed so you don't torque the torque wrench. You know, that sounds funny, don't it? <laughs> Meaning, if you, so a lot of people want to get down here and hold on to it and stuff like that. That can actually skew your torque settings. So he's just got his hand riding up there to steady it. Pulls right there, fingers open. Therefore, you get a nice, even pull. You can hear it click a little bit. You know you're there. All right, when you set your valve cover gasket in place, of course, you take your rag, wipe everything off, making sure it's all nice and clean. Look right here, you get that slot, and right there, you got a pin. In between that rock arm up there, which I can't reach way up there, there's a pin right to see where the end of his finger is. There's a pin there that this lines into. There's a pin right here that that one lines into. Super simple. Just don't hook it on your radiator cap. And people, I'm super picky about what kind of gaskets I use. Now, the gasket I use here, the Ferro Perma Drives, right there, <laughs> VS 50458R. It is for the Jeep six cylinders, 242 4.0s, which means it does not fit the 4.2, because they're actually the head shaped a little different on any of the valve covers are. So, perma drive gaskets, oil pan, everything. Use the perma drives because you want to do this job one time. There are cheaper gaskets, but you pay for what you get, you know. Don't skimp out if you want to do the job once. Give you a quick little tech tip on putting these things in. Because of that rubber gasket that sits on the valve cover down there, whenever you put your ratchet on there, take your, which I can't do with a camera in my hand, take your thumb, push on the socket toward your valve cover. Because what happens when you're first putting the, uh, bolts in the bolts want to lay backwards like it's right here because of that gasket and the, the rubber of that gaskets want to push it back a little bit so you put your uh, socket on there push the socket toward the valve cover which is going to make a rubber flex and allow your valve cover bolt to thread in properly because this one back here kept wanting to cross thread until I pushed in then it bit and then it got hold of the threads like it's supposed to and went in and fed in 
because it should go in easily. I mean, just about finger tight easily. If it feels like it's got any bind, don't do it because those bolts are going to break off very easily in the head and you've got a mess. And for your valve car. For your valve car? Yeah, valve car. And for you torque Nazis that's got to know the torque on everything, valve cover bolts, 55 inch pounds. If you have one of those torque wrenches, which I do, but 55 inch pounds. Tool tip, whenever you're using your torque wrench and you get through with it and you want to put it up, do not leave it. Like we talked torque on 19 foot pounds, don't leave it there. Always, uh, I can't do it one hand, but you always want to loosen it until the spring has no tension on it. See how loose it is now? That spring inside there has no tension on it. If you take and leave this on 20 pounds, 40 pounds, whatever you torque it, and you leave it like that, after a while it weakens that spring inside there and knocks them out of calibration. So back your torque wrench up till it's loose like that. There's no tension on the spring. You can now put it up. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit me with that thumbs up, subscribe if you have it. And we kind of got a little froggy putting it back together. A couple of details I missed, I'll tell you about. Nothing extravagant. I showed you guys how to torque the rocker arms, not a big deal, 19 foot pounds. When you tie the valve covers up, 55 inch pounds. Uh, when you put the coil packs in, just take them, tighten them up, snug them down real good, you're good to go. You don't have to make turn this into rocket science, okay? Now, if you're experiencing that valve train rattle that most 4.0s and 2.5s have, a lot of people want to go through and find the individual rocker arm that's making all the offensive sounds and stuff like that. Let me give you guys a little clue on something. If you got one rocker arm that's making that noise, and you change that one out, let me tell you something, you're gonna be doing it later on because the rest of them are far behind. So go ahead, change them all out, and get the job done once, and you're good to go for, I mean, this rig's got 180,000, wasn't it? 170. 170, yeah, close enough. So you change, put new, two, new little, you change, put new rockers in, you're good to go. I'll just insert this in at the end there somewhere. So he said something about food. He said Thai food, I love Thai food. So we was on the other side of Nashville, one guy some deep so you know i know you guys hate it while i leave you hanging did it fix the rattle absolutely it did actually the jeep seems to run a lot better because going down 40 there's some certain areas uh that the hill is a long gradual pull before replacing the rock arms and the valve train on top of the head right there before replacing all that every so often we'd have to downshift from fifth to fourth it pulled it constant 70 degree uh, 70 miles an hour all the way so it actually helped performance quite a bit. No more rattles. The Jeep pulls great now. So what that, and somebody's gonna ask, well, why would it make it run any better? What it boils down to is whenever you get the rocker arms and the uh, followers down there or the pivots or whatever it is you wanna call them, whenever you got that wear, you're losing valve lift. If you're losing valve lift, you're losing airflow coming into the head, so therefore you're losing performance. So that little bit of uh, added valve lift from proper valve train no pro no wear we put it to you that way it's made a big difference in the jeep i mean it pulls smoother uh it just run a whole lot better so if you've got that little tap going on don't replace just one one rocker arm replace them all you'll do you'll be doing yourself a big favor all right so i don't know where i'm going to insert this in so i just close it out like this if you guys enjoyed this video hit me with a thumbs subscribe if you have it and leave me some cool comments down below hope you enjoyed this peace later y'all so uh, what am I forgetting? Good thing I edit this stuff. <laughs>